think so? Well, let's start. First of all, thanks for this conversation. Yeah. And I know you are a very busy man being on tour. Yeah. I think you were about a year ago here in Mexico. Yeah, uh, probably. Starting the tour. Right, yeah. And, and how was it? The uh, Corona Capital, was that the one? That's the that's festival. Right. That was great, yeah. And it was still early now. It's, it feels very different now um, in terms of how we're playing and how late the show is and all of that stuff. But uh, I remember that being really exciting to be back here because it had been a while. Mm -hmm. been a few years since before, since we've been before. And um, and a big festival and that was, yeah, it was great. As you said, you are about a year touring with this, uh, this show, with yeah. the car incorporated in your show. Yeah. How, how do you get used to, to being with these kind of new songs and how was the reception of the audience? Uh, it's been great actually. We've, this was always a record I think that was going to be quite difficult to play live, to do it as do it justice because it sounds good on the record and we put a lot of effort into making it sound how it sounds. So I think trying to bring it to the live environment was a bit of a challenge. It took a lot of like practice and rehearsal to make it to do it as well as we wanted it to sound. Why it was difficult to, to incorporate these songs? Oh, into the set. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, that's also that's the other thing. The songs, obviously, from from the first record to this record, things start have changed quite a lot with the sound and sound quite different to each other. So we do spend a lot of time trying to uh, craft the set list to decide what's going to make sense after what. And the order of songs is really important. Um, and yeah, it's, it's definitely challenging, but we spend a lot of time thinking about that and change it, you know, almost every day we try different things. Mm -hmm. I had the chance to, to uh, talk with uh, Alex about the car yeah. and, and the main reasons to make the, the, these kind of songs and, and the, the meaning of them. And right. I would imagine that uh, right now uh, being incorporated and being part of your discography you can uh, you can think about the evolution of the Arctic Monkey sounds. Yeah. How, how do you describe this evolution? Um, I mean, it is it's strange to look at it as one big thing, like seven albums, the first one to this one. It is it is uh, it's probably is quite hard to like describe it in one like what that is, you know. It's lyrically, it's changed. Musically, it's changed a lot. Um, and we've just we were teenagers, and now we're really really not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like a natural thing as well, like growing up doing this. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't exactly know how to like pinpoint what that is. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that growing up and being in a different, different kind of person yeah. also evolves the ideas and the, and the Absolutely. imaginary of art. Yeah. How, how do you describe the art you are making right now? Um, I mean, it do, I suppose I don't like to use this term, but it does sound a lot more grown up and a lot more like mature in a way. But I think it's just, we would, we naturally got better at what we do. We got better at playing our instruments, better at making records, better at writing songs. And I think it, the evolution of that has been natural. And so where we're at now, I suppose, is just, I don't know, it just feels very like, it feels like a high quality and like, Tasteful. I don't know. I don't know what a word would be for what what we're doing right now, but it's yeah. definitely evolved naturally to where we are. When you say tasteful, I, I imagine some kind of dish, like you are or like right now, like in a high cuisine. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe we are. Maybe we're in Michelin star. <laughs> How do you taste? Do you feel now like a Michelin chef? I like the way that makes sense. We started with fast food. That I everybody can I relate to. Think you are, yeah, but never we go like but fast food. in the sense that it's something everyone can relate to. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, but I suppose that, yeah, the quality has improved in many ways. Not that that was. I still like love those records and still love playing those songs from the first few records. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a quality change in many ways. And the demand is also a change. I think that in the beginning, like the record companies and the audience. They, they will cheer up with any kind of success, but they are right. demanding right now more, more lights, more screens, more music, Oh, yeah, more yeah, yeah. Well, the people in general, you mean? The demand, yeah, yeah, it's a demanding world uh, for that kind of thing. And I think, yeah, I think we've managed to sort of keep a balance on staying true to what we like and happy with what we do and, and also, uh, you know, delivering a good experience for, like, fans and, you know, yeah, I think so. And it's easy? 
to get this no, balance? I don't think so. I don't think it's, but I don't think it's something we um, struggle with either. I think because the things we focus on are different. I think the things we focus on are songwriting and making records and playing well live, and everything else sort of like. I mean, we're lucky that it is that way around. It's not that easy for everybody, but it's everything else around it sort of like comes with us or it doesn't come with us. There's people that have been there from the beginning. There's people that have, you know, left us probably. But yeah, for, for us, it's quite natural because we've, we're focusing on the bit that we do know about and we do like, which is making music. You have been around touring about a year. Yeah. Do you have the itch to make new, new music, to go to the studio again and make a new record? I mean, usually that happens. Usually with, like, by the time we finish, we're just ready to get straight back in. Um, I think at the moment we've really enjoyed this tour and it's sort of ending in a really good place. We just did like the, the North American tour was really fun. This is an amazing place to play always. Um, so I think it's sort of, I think we'll all have to take some time to let it all sink in because it's been a particularly fun one and bigger shows than we've ever done and stuff like that. Um, but like, yeah, you never stop thinking about making music. It's not something you sort of like turn off when you write songs. I suppose that's more a case for Alex because he's the main songwriter and he's probably always thinking about, you know, things like that. But I think for the band, I think we'll just take a breather after this tour and just like, yeah. To, to, to rest a, a little and Let then it all sink go in and again. then and then see what we want to do. You, ha you are uh, always uh, with your, 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 your camera. Yeah. How many pictures do you take in this, in, in this time here in Mexico City? I still try to not take too many because I usually shoot on film cameras and then and even if I shoot on a digital camera I still do it the way I do on a film camera so I don't take like thousands of photos I sort of consider what I'm seeing and if it's worth taking a picture of or not because I can get carried away I, I, on the phone I'll take any you know just like silly ones but with the camera I think about it a bit more I always think it's better yeah. because if you have a camera in your in your phone yeah later you will never see the photos you take no, I know. because you have thousands and thousands it's of them. It's too many. Yeah, and I never, yeah. It is the same with songs, that you have to, to select the ones that are, go to your heart and to, to your memory? Yeah, and I think when we're, and it is hard to narrow it down. I think the more and more we make records, we sort of, uh, we never end up with like 50 and then we choose 10. We sort of like know, what, by the end of it, we know what the 10 are going to be and we focus on those ones. Are you thinking about the 10 ten ten songs of the Arctic Monkeys that are right for you? Uh, sometimes it just feels right. Like by the end of it, we sort of all agree that like these are the best 10 or these work for the record and it makes sense as, you know, start to finish. It's, it, it's a difficult process. Sometimes there's ones that get left off that you think should have been on there. Um, but yeah, you have to really like be strict with yourself to narrow it down. Or my time is running out, so okay. I have two last questions. The, okay. the first is, how, how do you see yourself in a year? I, I, I think you're returning for a year. Yeah, how so another year. In 2024. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how long this uh, breather will be that we take to like let it all sink in. It'd be nice to have a bit of time at home, do some real life for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd also like to carry on making music, whether that's whether the band are doing anything or if just myself. You Where know, are you living in LA? Yeah. How do you? Th feel about the, the situation in LA. I, I've been in LA about uh, this week yeah. and I see this homeless situation and the oh, immigrants. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's painful for, for the people that are on the street but also for the citizens of LA. Yeah, no, it's kind of crazy. I was all along that coast. I've seen it in America. It's, uh, it's a big problem. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure to have you here and, Thank and you. have a good concert today. Thank you. Without an earthquake. Oh, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome.